everyone, it's Sevi. Genshin's newest addition to its bow collection is the Aqua Simulacra, a very attractive weapon both aesthetically and with its seemingly juicy 88% crit damage substat that is obviously tailor-made for Yelan with its HP increasing passive. But I've gotten some questions asking me what I think of this bow on other archers. And so to answer that question, let me share my thoughts and findings on how Aqua Simulacra fares on other DPS archers. This will be a fairly short video, but my recommendation is very simple. If you want the best for Yelan, then this is your bow. But if you want to pull this for anyone else that's not Yelan, you might want to think twice. Let me discuss why. First, let's take a look at the bow. The 88% crit damage substat, equivalent to 88 CV, is what stands out the most, and you might think that, well, okay, that's some pretty high crit damage, it must be the best, right? Even the Thundering Pulse or Polar Star only has 66 CV, right? Well, upon closer inspection, the Aqua Simulacra has a low base attack for a 5-star weapon. The only other 5-stars that have similar base attack are the Primordial Jade Cut and the Redhorn Stone Thresher, which you'll also notice have the same CV substat of 88. While this low base attack isn't a problem for Yelan, since she relies on her HP stat for her main damage source, this is a drawback for other attack scaling bow DPS characters. The Jade Cutter makes up for its lower base attack by adding HP and converting a character's max HP into attack, while the Red Horn gives defense and converts the user's defense into added base damage on normal and charged attacks. Meanwhile, the Aqua Simulacra doesn't have a built-in conversion mechanic. Instead, its passive does two things. One, it gives HP, which is great on Yelan, but doesn't do anything for the damage of other characters. And two, adds a universal damage bonus, which is decent, but is conditional on having nearby enemies. The Aqua Simulacra is still a 5-star weapon, and it should generally outdamage most 4-star weapons by a significant margin. So, a fair comparison would be versus its fellow 5-star bows equipped on their best users. And as a universal 5-star baseline, we'll also throw in the Skyward Harp for comparison, a less specialized but all-around DPS bow thanks to its crit stats and damage over time effect, and highest bow base attack. For my personal tests, I was able to try it on Yuimiya, Child, and Ganyu versus their signature weapons, the Thundering Pulse, Polar Star, and Amos Bow respectively, and Skyward Harp for everyone too. Since these are also units that like Bennett in some of their comps, I'll also test them with Bennett equipped with Noblesse to see how much the added attack affects results. These tests are using my own build and in order to balance out the varying crits, I swapped between crit rate to crit damage circlets that have very similar substat levels. I'll show the test footage and then consolidate them in table comparisons with the raw damage or average damage and percent increase computed based on a 1 to 2 crit ratio. These still aren't super min-max for efficiency, so my percentage comparisons have some margin for change. So if you want more theoretical math comparisons, refer to theory crafting spreadsheets, which I'll reference later as well. The quickest and most straightforward demo to show first is Yoimiya's damage comparison. Let's look at my raw damage first, then show the computed comparison in a table after. Across the board, we see that Yormia's normal attacks on Thundering Pulse are considerably higher than the Aqua's, whereas Aqua has barely any difference to the Skyward Harp. While the crit value on the Aqua Simulacra seems much higher, the Skyward has a very high base attack which is still valuable. And take note that it also has a physical damage hit that can be procced every few seconds. What if we put Bennett? The result is that the Thundering Pulse is still noticeably ahead in terms of damage. Simply put, if you want the best for Yoimiya, wait for the Thundering Pulse if you don't have it yet, or stick with the Rust, which at R5 outdamages most R1 5-star bows on Yoimiya. Let's see if it's the same case for Child and Ganyu with their signature weapons versus the Aqua and Skyward, starting with Child. Yourself. This is gonna hurt. 
With Child on a Heart of Depth set without team buffs, Polar Star with stacks has a marked improvement across every aspect of his kit, while the Aqua and Skyward fell a bit more behind it and are closer to one another. This is mainly because of Polar Star's very generous attack buff at high stacks, complementing Child's damage bonus multipliers. Let's see how having Bennett affects the results. Adding Bennett makes Polar Star and the Aqua very, very close to each other in damage. The way I see this is that Polar Star is still generally preferable. When there's multi wave content, enemy spawn points might force you to move around outside of Bennett's circle, in which case Aqua Simulacra's power dips down in relation to Polar Star and the gap becomes noticeable. This will also be the case for child teams that don't have Bennett. Meanwhile, there are battles that let you stay inside Bennett's circle to maximize the buff time, in which case Aqua Simulacra does very well, but it's still more or less at par with Polar Star. Now let's look at Ganyu. First, we're assuming a melt playstyle with Bennett again. This Ganyu build first has an attack Sans. Standing on top of a Bennett buff, in terms of raw damage, the Aqua and Amos are very close to each other. But take note, this isn't yet accounting for the reverse melt damage. So if we're really going for reaction damage, let's try this EM Sans build. Looking at the reverse melt damage, the Aqua Simulacra finally pulls ahead by a bit. I thought these results were interesting, so I checked out Arganyu Main's new weapon rankings. These show that in a melt team, especially with Bennett, Aqua can overcome its lack of attack stat and allow its massive crit damage to come through, further amplifying those juicy melts. All of this, of course, assuming you stay within close enough range of the enemy to retain its buff at all times. On a Freeze Morgana team, however, Aqua tops the Amos bow. A big contributor here is now Ganyu's Burst, which contributes a lot to the Morgana team damage but doesn't get buffed by Amos while Aqua's buff still applies. So what are some key takeaways? Well, the Aqua is still a good weapon even for non-Yelan characters. By virtue of being a new 5-star weapon, it can still generally outperform 4-star weapons and power creep the old Skyward Harp. Yoimiya would still prefer the Thundering Pulse or even an R5 Rust. As for Child, Polar Star is still also generally better, but that doesn't mean the Aqua is bad on them. However, if you're a Ganyu main, the Aqua Simulacra turns out to be a top tier weapon for her most popular teams and looks really, really pretty on her too. But if you already have a current 5-star bow for her, or even an R5 prototype for Freeze, it's really up to you if that damage increase is worth wailing for on the banner. In my opinion, this is a great weapon banner if you don't have the Jade Wing Spear yet, which is an excellent weapon for most, if not all, polearm users. So at least if you manage to pull either of these 5 stars, it's something. Even then, if you already have well-fitting 4-star bows for your current non yelan bow users, and especially if they're on high refinements, then depending on which character you main, it might be better to save for when the actual signature weapon of your favorite characters comes up to really get the best potential damage increase and best drip, or just wait to lose to the still very dependable Skyward Harp. And those are my thoughts about the Aqua Simulacra. Of course, if you need more details, refer to the character's dedicated weapon calculation sheets for a more comprehensive source of info. Let me know down below what you think of Aqua Simulacra and the current weapon banner. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!